Right, good morning guys. Welcome to our final topic for this term. Okay. So if you check there, we are going to do market failures. Okay. So on market failures, the description of market failures then. Uh, so on market failures, we are trying to look at how does the market fail. And very important is the reasons for market failure. How does it fail? What causes the market failure? Okay. Right. So market failures, okay, when the market is not efficient. Okay. So remember on what I said last time, we have uh, two types of what inefficiencies that we have. It's either we have uh, allocative or uh, productive what? Inefficiency. We have production inefficiency and allocative what inefficient okay so sometimes free markets fail to produce maximum of goods and services from a given set of what of resources the market uh, also fails to produce the optimal mix of goods and services desired by consumers these are some of the causes of what of market failures okay so we have externalities on externalities we are talking about benefits or costs that are accrue to, to, to use of a certain product or service, okay? So that's what you mean by externalities there, right? So sometimes they are called spillover what? effects, okay? So we have externalities, we have missing markets, we have imperfect competition, we have lack of information, immobility of production factors, and then imperfect distribution of it, uh, income and wealthy. So that's what we have there. So on externalities, we are trying to say they are known spillover, they are known as what? Spillover effects, okay? So sometimes they ask you to define what are spillover, what effects? So sometimes in ideal markets conditions, uh, conditions some people gain or suffer due to the existence of what of externalities. So externalities are costs this is what you need to highlight. Costs or benefits, okay, to third parties, which are not included in the market price of goods and services, okay? Right. So, they are costs or benefits. I think I've just said so. Right. So, four important concepts to consider are private or internal what? costs. So, costs consumers in care when buying goods, e.g., price of bicycle uh, of 1,500. If someone buys a bicycle of 1,500, this is called a private cost. You see that? Because it's a consumer is somebody who has just decided to buy one, to buy a bicycle. That's why we call it a, what, a private what cost. Then private benefit. Private benefit. Uh, is benefits of those who buy and produce goods, like profit for the producer. So if I decide to produce maybe those bicycles, okay, the profit that I'm going to make is called private what benefit. Then we go to social cost. Social cost, we are talking about costs to producers in society at large. Okay, so it's cost to producers and society at large this includes additional costs like disposing waste. So social, it means it is affecting the other society or many people. No wonder why we are calling it what? Social. So it is social because it affects the society. It affects many people. That's how it is different from what private cost and private benefit. You see that? Right. So for example, if we dispose waste here, right, okay. We are decreasing the appeal of what of any area, or we are causing sicknesses. Okay, oh, we are maybe maybe they, there's gonna be cholera there, or mosquitoes, or malaria, or any form of sickness that people are going to have to suffer from. Uh, then it becomes a social what cost. Then um, the same applies to social benefit. Social benefit we are talking about. The positive externalities like clean water leading to few illnesses. So these are benefits that are 
accruing or that are, uh, are benefiting the other society. Okay, so we have um, uh, positive externalities like clean water leading to few illnesses, healthier workforce, higher productivity. Okay, right, okay. So externalities are divided into two. We have what we call positive externality and negative externality. So it's written here, positive one, externality. Okay. So um, on the private cost, which is the internal cost, and benefits are, uh, are determined by the market what mechanism. They have a price attached to them. Okay. So a private cost, we are talking about the cost that you are going, the money that you are going to pay in order to get that. We call it uh, the private cost. Okay. Then externalities do not go through the market mechanism and thus do not have a price attached to them. Okay. So if we just throw maybe rubbish somewhere and then people get sick, there is no price, there is no direct price that is attached to them. You see that. But if it is private cost for you to access that or that item or asset, you need to pay. That's why we say there is a what? There is a price that is attached to them. Okay. Externalities converts private cost and benefits to social what? Cost and what and benefits. Okay. So externalities are the difference between social cost and benefits. And private what? Cost and benefits. So these externalities, they fall in between what? Social cost and benefits and private cost and what and benefits if we subtract the two then we get what you call externalities then we move on so we go to the second cause of what of market failure which is the markets okay so on the markets markets are often incomplete in the sense that they cannot meet the demand for certain goods okay so the public sector provides these goods known as what public goods. Okay. So public goods, I think we know they are divided into community goods, which is water drainage and lighthouses. I think you know the drains that are there in, the, in our communities or wherever. Those are public goods that we have. And then collective goods, which are parks and what and pavements. Okay. Right, okay. So public goods are not provided by price mechanism because the producer cannot withhold goods for non-payment. Okay. So you will continue to consume the other good despite not paying for them. Then the state finances public goods through taxation and provide it uh, themselves. Okay. In South Africa, most goods and services that are private goods have rivalry in consumption and excludability. Now we are going to look at what is rivalry and uh, excludability. So public goods, they have one characteristic of what of non-rivalry. So we are saying consumption by one person does not reduce consumption by another individual. Okay. So um, like, for example, a lighthouse or street lights. Okay. As many, many... You know, one streetlight can be able to serve thousands or millions of what of people. So we are saying consumption by one, it doesn't reduce consumption by another one. Individual. Okay. So we have streets, we have our street lights, we have our tower lights, we have our maybe the the the, the um, um what, what do you call it? We we have many, even the roads. You see the traffic lights, okay. They are part of what public goods. Then non-excludability. Consumption of public goods cannot be um, confined to only those who pay for it. Results, it results in what free riders. Okay, like for example, a television. Television rights, licenses. Some they don't pay for them. Some they pay. Radio license, some they pay for them. Some they don't pay. Okay, so that's what we have there. Right. Then we go to social benefits as outstrip private what? Benefits. Okay. 
So we are saying social benefits are relatively larger than what uh, private benefits. Okay, e.g. healthcare and education. We know one school can be able to save the whole community or one hospital can be able to save a, a very large community. That's why we are saying social benefits, they outstrip what private benefits. Okay, then we have infinite consumption. This is one characteristic of what of uh, public goods. So on infinite consumption, we are saying once provided marginal cost of supplying one more individual is zero. Like, for example, traffic, what? Lights. You can consume at will or as much as you want. Okay. But it doesn't get finished. Then there is a non-rejectability. Or non-rejectability, we are saying individual may not be able to abstain from consuming them, even if they want to. E.g. street lights. Okay. So, if the street light is in front of your house, uh, you can't say, I don't want to use it. Or you can't choose not to use it. Or maybe we have police that is manning your area there. Okay, you can't block them to come to your area. You see that because you can't reject. There is one characteristic of what? Non-rejectability. Then we go to merit goods. So merit goods, when it comes to, to public goods, these are goods that are highly desirable for general welfare but not highly rated by the market. So on what I said last time, merit goods, they are underproduced because they are useful for the community. So they are underproduced and they are underconsumed. You see that? So that's what we have there on what on merit goods. They are underproduced and underconsumed. This is vice versa to the, to the, to the uh, demerit goods. So if people had to pay market price for them relatively, too little would be consumed. The market to what will fail. So e.g. we have the healthcare there, hospitals are for free, and then education schools are for free. They offer free education. Otherwise, if they ask people to, to use those, it means um, right, it means that um, people are not going to use the, what, the service. Merit goods are a special form of part of private goods because few people would pay for education if they had to meet the full cost. And this would result in what? In market failure. Okay. So in a pure market system, consumers spending on merit goods is determined by private benefits. So merit goods have positive externalities. The social benefits derived from their consumption exceed their private benefits. So a common method to overcome the imminent Market failure is for the state to provide them. Okay, so that's what we have there. Then we end on demerit goods. So this is what I've, I've, I've said. This is opposite. Demerit goods are opposite to, what? to merit goods. These are goods that are harmful to the community. Like, for example, consumption of cigarettes or drugs, tobacco, alcohol, and gambling. It affects the, what? the society. So in other words... This is over, over uh, produced and over what? Consumed. That's what we have there. Demerit goods are over consumed and over produced. Okay, so for today we stop there. Thank you.